I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, uh, take it away, Doctor. Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, is brought to you this week by Lynda.com. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time once again for Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, yes. And this week, we have some stuff. <laughs> I usually have some stuff, and this time I have some. It's not a lot, because after all, it is Thanksgiving week, and I have been taking it off and being fairly, fairly sorry about everything. You know, just kind of yeah, laying around, watching a little TV. Yeah. <laughs> Not doing anything terribly exciting, but I have blogged a bit this week. So let's talk about the bit wherein of I have blogged. By the way, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. Yes, we're also proud members of the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Just saying. So, um, hope you had a great Thanksgiving holiday. Some of you are still in the midst of it. I mean, after all, as I record this, it's a Saturday. And that's still part of the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Some of you participated in Black Friday. I did not. <laughs> I chose not to participate because... It's just too much trouble, and there are too many humans out there bumping into each other and elbowing each other and things of that nature. So, I stayed quietly at home, which I find much preferable to getting punched and beaten and run over by lots of humans. I don't know why people do that, but anyway. So, plus, you know, I, I tend to buy everything online anyway. That way you don't actually have to go to any stores. You you click, and you're done. And they send it to me. And most of the time these days, the shipping is free, too. So, anyway. And the prices are better. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, first item from the blog. The blog, of course, is drbill.tv, as it says there on the screen. And the first item after the last netcast is indeed elementary OS. Elementary. Elementary, dear Watson. Yes. Has nothing to do with Sherlock Holmes, though. But it is talking about the elementary OS, which is a version of Linux. It's a Linux distro. And it is... Um, it's different. It's, well, yes, it's different. <laughs> Trying to decide just how different it is. It's not orders of magnitude different than a lot of Linux distros, but it is somewhat different. It's kind of designed more, as the name implies, elementary. It is designed for simplicity, for minimalism. Okay? Uh, it's a good OS to run on an older system because it is so minimalized. I, I hope those are real words. I'm not trying to make any words up, but those just work. Anyway, um, they say about themselves that they are community-driven, they are transparent and open, they are beautiful and usable, they are modern computing, okay, they are speedy. The new version, the version that I'm talking about here is called Luna. And it says, Luna has been engineered from the ground up to be light on its toes. It starts up quickly, it logs in instantly, and it uses the bare minimum of resources, so your apps enjoy a speed boost as well. With Luna, you get the same Linux foundation chosen for the world's fastest supercomputers. Dude. Full of features. When you install elementary, you're not just installing an operating system, you're also installing a suite of custom-tailored apps that lets you get right to business. You surf the web, check your email, listen to music, tackle everyday tasks or pleasures. Now, um, 
some of their choices of apps aren't my favorites, but they're very usable and workable, and they seem to have fit it together into a nice distro, nice cohesive distro. So I can appreciate that. Uh, they have uh, music players. Uh, they even as you install it, they give you the option to install MP3 support uh, and all that kind of stuff, which is cool. I installed it in a virtual machine in a VM uh, under VirtualBox, and you know it was it was cool. I kind of enjoyed it. It was very clean. I'll, I'll say that. Uh, for surfing the web instead of Chrome, I mean, I went ahead and installed Chrome, but out of the box it installs Midori. I had really never heard of Midori, so oh well. But anyway, uh, empathy is what you can use to connect uh, Jabber, Facebook, Google Talk, AIM, IRC, Yahoo, all through empathy. Geary Mail, again, I never heard of Geary Mail. That's another open source project I had not heard of. Uh, but it's simplified email, again, emphasis on clean and simple. Shotwell to organize. Uh, and import and edit your photos. I had heard of that one, so. But anyway, it's uh, it's interesting. So check it out. I have an image here in the blog of the screen after I installed it, uh, and it's it's Mac-like. You know, it looks very Macish, <laughs> if that's a word. But anyway, so onward. Um, Google Voice commands. Google Voice. Yes. Voice commands via Google Chrome plugin. Now, you may have seen in the Chrome browser the little microphone thing that you can say, okay, Google. And it'll come up and go, okay, what do you wanna what do you want to search? And you can say something, it'll search it. If you have a headset on or some other kind of microphone, right? So anyway, now they have added that as a Chrome extension for hands-free voice search on your desktop. This is a uh, post from 9to5Google blog. It says, Google today announced the Google, that Google, on Google Plus, I, I, on Google Plus, that it's releasing a new extension for Chrome that will enable hands-free activation of the voice search features it rolled out earlier this year. Google announced the conversational voice search features for Chrome back in May, and it's been updating it on various platforms since, but previously users had to actually click the microphone icon to activate voice search on the desktop. Now you can just say, okay, Google, and it'll come up, and you can search, and I searched for myself. I Googled myself using voice commands, and it found me. Yay. <laughs> Anyway, it was kind of, you know, it's kind of fun. I mean, why not? You know, speaking of Google, Google, I got up this morning. As I said, I'm recording this on a Saturday, which is Saturday, November the 30th, which happens to be my birthday. And so Google greeted me this morning with, Happy birthday, Dr. Bill. And I went, aww. <laughs> yes, I'm easily pleased. Yes. Anyway, so it's as I post here in the blog, I said, I got a happy birthday today from Google. Don't I feel special? Yes, November 30th. So I am older. Great. Well, as they say, it beats the alternative. Huh. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yes. Geek Software of the Week, drum roll! Way to go, Fred. Geek Software of the Week this week is T-Audio Converter. Yes. T, I'm not sure what the T is for. Maybe the guy that wrote his name is Tom. I don't know. But anyway. It's open source and it's T-Audio Converter. It is an advanced multi-threaded audio converter and extractor. It can convert any audio format to AAC, MP3, WAV, FLAC, AC3, AUG, Opus, MPC, APE, or TTA. TTA. Ta ta. <laughs> it can also extract audio streams from video files. It can apply various effects to audio streams. 
Yes. So their feature list here is that it is multi-threaded. It converts audio files to audio... Audio files to audio files. I think they mean audio formats. It will convert some among them. Okay. Extract audio files from videos and encode them. Encode in all those formats I mentioned just a moment ago. Copy embedded artwork to the output folder. Select between multiple encoders. Both portable and setup versions are available. Apply effects to audio files. Simple clear interface. Shell extension to start encoding with right clicking. Now I installed it. Full disclosure here. I installed it and this simple clear interface not so much. <laughs> In my humble opinion. It was kind of... Mm, I think the thing is it's different from the one that I normally use which is AVS for You Audio Converter. I find that much easier to use guys. Just, just saying. Okay. But the difference is, avs for You Audio Converter is a purchased product. So you have to actually buy it, which I bought a long time ago. And they give you a lifetime license. So, I mean, you're good. You know what I'm saying? Once you buy it, done. All right. And the way avs for You works, just by way of information, is that you pay one price for a lifetime license for all their products. So their video editor, their audio editor, the everything they have, their converters, audio and video converters, everything you get for the same license fee. So that's good. I like it. Speaking of which, we have a sponsor this week. I, it sounded like I was giving them a commercial is what reminded me. I'm not actually. I'm not an. They're not an affiliate or anything, or a, or a sponsor or anything. So I'm not an affiliate of theirs. That's what I meant. Anyway, um. However, our sponsor this week is Lynda.com. Yes, L Y N D A dot com. And as the lower third banner there indicates, what you need to do is this. See what you got to do is this. Go to our website, drbill.tv, D-R-B-I-L-L.tv, as it says there on the banner, and look over on the right-hand side column, and you will see the Belinda banner ad thing. If you click through that, please, I encourage you to click through that, because that will tell them that you came from my site, and in doing so, I'll get brownie points, which will be nice. Now what they have is a special deal for you. And this deal is that they have online training videos. This is what lynda.com is all about. They have online training videos. You can get a seven day free trial. Any of their videos you can watch in seven days you can do for free. And if you like it and you think, wow, this is a really great service, then when you click through the banner on the website, then you can sign up for $25 a month and get access to all their courses. Okay? So it's a really, really great deal. It's continuing education in geekery. Dude, that's pretty cool. So I encourage you to do that. We also have one other sponsor this week that I will mention very quickly. Although they're not like the primary sponsor on the show, I... I just signed up as an affiliate with them, and I really like their service. It's called Spam Hero. They will scan all your incoming email for your entire domain for only $4.95 a month. Now, you can't beat that with a stick, okay? So go to the same website, drbill.tv, click on the banner, once again on the right-hand side, where it says Spam Hero, eliminate 98% of all your spam. You click there and you can sign up. Dude, it's awesome. So check that out as well. I just wanted to mention them, even though they're not our one and only sponsor this week like lynda.com is, because I just signed up for them and I'm pretty excited about it. So anyway, so next item and last item. I told you it was going to be a short one. Anyway, oh well. Save Winamp. <laughs> Save Winamp. Make it open source. This is what hundreds of thousands have signed a petition 
to do, and that's save Winamp. Make it an open source project. They're asking AOL to open source it. Now, AOL has said nothing <laughs> in response to their petition. So who knows? But Ars Technica reports last week AOL announced the impending death of Winamp, saying that the 16-year-old media player would be shut down within a month. Dude. Winamp and associated web services will no longer be available past December 20th, 2013. Additionally, Winamp media players will no longer be available for download. Please download the latest version before that date, AOL announced. So fans of the venerable software have launched a Save Winamp website and petition asking AOL either to keep Winamp alive or to open source its code. So that's what that's all about. So if you want to click through to the article and then click through to the petition, you can sign the petition to keep Winamp out there. Keep it being developed as an open source project. I'm a great believer in open source and I think that's a great idea. Now last week Microsoft was talking about buying and I haven't heard anything about that since. So I don't know if that's going to happen. Obviously, if that happens, it probably won't become open source, but we'll see. In the meantime, you can sign the petition and speak your mind and become an advocate of open source. Yes, it's a good thing. It's your patriotic duty. <laughs> I make it up as I go along, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, well, anyway, like I said, trust you had a great Thanksgiving vacation. Hope you enjoyed the show. Join us again next time. Remember until then that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.